Hello and welcome back to the Click Podcast everybody. Happy New Year and hope you all had a great holiday season. I know we had we took a long break there but we were only taking the time to kind of reassess and come up with better and more engaging content. Hope you all are excited. Uh this is the first ever episode that we are shooting for 2023 and who better than to open it with the project that we have today with this today joining us is the project that i have been super excited about and i have been following for the uh, second half of 2022 and uh, to present and talk about this project today here with me is uh, albert and morgan from valley dav welcome guys how are you guys doing today doing great uh yeah we've been equally excited to uh record this episode with you. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having us on. We're really excited to to kick 2023 off with a with a bang. Oh, isn't this your first ever podcast as a da? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't uh haven't had the chance yet, so uh this is yeah, a really uh unique and special opportunity. So that you're doing it with us. Really looking forward to the convo. So in general, I think uh, besides the Twitter space, uh you know the community beyond the core DeFi community will really have an opportunity to uh find out what valley dow is all about and before we get to valley dow in general i would love to understand more about your personal backgrounds and uh what exactly were the values that connected you with the dow space you know uh in general it's a lot of idealism or it's just, uh, in general it's the opportunity of participating in a movement like this that uh, attracts a lot of people what, what what is your story that connected you with the dow space my background is in synthetic biology um engineering um I started a masters back in Sweden and um I think what you know drew me to you know looking into web3 and DAOs is um after having gone to uh so called uh, burning man inspired events um they're <laughs> kind of <laughs> yeah they're they're kind of like you know co-created festivals events where um you know everybody brings their own stuff they set up their own camps everybody brings their own food you have to be completely self reliant and you know through that people are you know creating really cool experiences uh you know creating art uh uh hosting workshops and really connecting on a very deep level um and you know reflecting back at it like what you know at least gave me these profound you know deep connection with other people and you know through those events i learned a lot about myself my values and what i want to personally accomplish in life um i think i had those experiences because uh just the due to the sense of community that was created uh during that event so basically when people come together with a shared common goal of having a good time in this case and and learning about oneself and other people uh that's where like you know real magic happens and to me you know that's the lens that i see uh dows through and that's what drew me to to dows it's you know in a way very very similar to that but we're all operating towards a more you know um let's say uh technological goal or productive goal to solve you know a particular uh, problem um and uh that's the kind of you know uh community that we want to create uh with valid out but tailored more towards uh, solving problems in in synthetic biology so what i find interesting is that um, uh, you know you're coming from a very different background you know synthetic biology and you still were able to find that sort of community uh centered around collaboration you know uh generally across verticals uh, people are inherently collaborative but the way uh the systems around these verticals are structured you are either confined to your company and it's very difficult to have that sort of uh cross collaboration that uh the dao space kind of functions that way and uh the way uh, i think you also come from this background where um you mentioned that the whole burning man festivals itself Uh, that's <laughs> uh, that you're talking uber collaboration <laughs> and forget collaboration you know, you're having a lot of fun and uh, i think the dao space in general this allows us to relax while focusing on the big picture that way so pretty neat uh, for you to kind of transition into uh, from a very hardcore scientific vertical into uh, kind of facilitating 
uh, this sort of funding and collaboration with Valley Dollar that way. Morgan, what's your story? Uh, how did you, uh, you know, connect so well with the DAO space? Yeah, thanks for sharing that, Albert. Um, that's actually the first time I've heard the Burning Man story. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> interesting insight. Um, but like Albert, I uh, I come from a synthetic biology background. So I also did a master's in it um, and not too long ago finished. Um, but I'd say mainly I describe myself as a, a constructive anarchist. Um, I've for a very long time been frustrated with politics, society, um, research, so many things that like essentially systems that have been put in place to benefit uh, society as a whole, but that just don't seem to be serving their purpose or at least serving their purpose in, in the way that they were intended. Um, so, you know, science, the synthetic biology was no different than that. Um, I got into it because I really wanted to do something constructive for the world. Um, and it seemed like it had uh, lots of promise, um, and a rapidly advancing field, um, you know, with a really core thesis of interdisciplinary collaboration. Um, so it really felt like going into synthetic biology was, was going to mean that I was going to belong to something. Um, but then getting there and realizing that, okay, there are definitely communities, um, but just as an ecosystem as a whole, there, there wasn't that kind of community sense that I, I, I'd been seeking, um, similar to Albert, you know, the, those community values are really, um, you know, that I hold them very close to my heart. And I think those are, are the real tools that we need to empower us to make uh, a massive impact on the world around us. Um, so yeah, I kind of fell into discovering the web three space and it had the community that I'd been searching for, but it just felt like the community wasn't doing uh, what I was particularly interested in or, or suited for. Um, so it took me a while to kind of find my place in fitting into that. But when I discovered decentralized science, well, it was quite obvious that this is a, a really interesting and exciting application of, of Web3 technologies. And yeah, I was in, quickly introduced to Albert and uh, yeah, we shared a lot of the same philosophies and ideas uh, about the future, especially for synthetic biology in particular. Um, so it was a natural fit. It's pretty neat, you know, I mean, even though you have the opportunity to, uh, I mean, the Web3 space is very agnostic, you know, when you talk about different backgrounds, but still, you know, DISA at its start is still so nascent. And it was very interesting to see how you both come from the same synthetic bio background and you've come together to kind of make this happen, you know, because, uh, you know, you know, people are kind of very interest bound in the space, you know, uh, wherever the money is, they kind of come together for that. But here, your prime background towards uh, kind of making this feel better, just uh, kind of culminated into creating a DAO that's kind of focused towards solving the problems of the space. And that's pretty neat. Most other people would have just uh, tried to make the next big DeFi protocol and uh, try to make some cash out of that. But you uh, stuck to uh, what you were kind of capable of and uh, the DSI movement just facilitated that. However, you know, we've spoken to a couple of DAOs um, prior to having you on the show from the DSI space. You know, we had LabDAO and SCRF and they both uh, fundamentally talk about very uh, similar pain points. You know, LabDAO kind of comes in from uh, hardcore, I mean, people coming in from different medical verticals coming together to solve uh, certain issues, you know, be it uh, patient data uh, coming together to kind of uh, allow, uh, you know, for probably some research or something to collaborate on that in a much more transparent and uh, provenant manner or SCRF, you guys will know these people. So fundamentally, the issues are that uh, there are walled gardens uh, across research hubs uh, be, across verticals, you know, be it biology, be it synthetic bio, be it biotech, uh, or various other verticals. It's uh, you need to have that sort of uh, background, you need to have that sort of PhD, or be associated with that sort of companies to be able to access that sort of uh, cutting edge research. Or uh, fundamentally, because that research is gated, it's only a very small portion of countries across the globe that are able to access that. This is what we've heard from. Um, you know, these are DAOs. Uh, but coming to your field, that is synthetic biology, what exactly is the state of affairs in this vertical? You know, uh, I would even ask, go down even more fundamental. What exactly is synthetic biology? 
uh, and what's going on in this field. If we could go down into this for our general DAO audience, you know, it would be pretty cool. I think it, it makes sense to maybe start at like what is like biotechnology. Like that's the, the most common, you know, term people are aware of. Um, I mean, to me, how I interpret it and how I like to explain it, it's, you know, how can we use uh, living systems um, to, to solve various problems in, in human and planetary health? Um, in biotechnology, it's quite common to see, you know, for example, inserting a, a certain gene from a plant into um, a, let's say yeast or a bacteria to produce you know a certain compound that has uh, some kind of medical benefit the very clear you know example of this is um, you know taking um, uh, the, the the gene for for human insulin expressing it in, in yeast um, and then all of a sudden you can mass produce insulin and uh, uh, you know solve that problem for you know millions of, of diabetics. Um, and, and this is, you know, with time and, and, you know, with, you know, more, uh, you know, fine tuning and development of the techniques used in, in, in biotechnology, we've kind of, you know, uh, come into the realm of synthetic biology where synthetic biology is like, okay, instead of just one, introducing one gene, how can we introduce numerous genes to create much more complex systems that, uh, uh, can do, uh, you know, produce, you know, certain compounds that we've never seen before, but also, you know, producing them in a way that is completely sustainable. Um, so one, you know, quite com one uh, interesting example uh, that is still, you know, being in uh, developed is how can we use, for example, carbon dioxide or methane that are greenhouse gases and convert them into, into fuels or into uh, synthetic beef, for example, and, you know, completely uh, eliminating uh, fossil fuels, uh, eliminating the animal from the equation, uh, and, you know, drastically slash the, the amount of emissions. Uh, so that's kind of like the explanation without getting a bit too, too technical. Um, and that's how I like to explain it. It's just, you know, very tangible examples of how synthetic biology, uh, what it is and, and how it can uh, be applied. Nice. Maybe Morgan, you want to um, add a, a bit more nuance yeah. and, and uh, uh, things to that? Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to happy to geek out on this one. Um, I guess you know <laughs> something that might be quite familiar to this kind of audience is um, is you know we're we're trying to do to the cell what we did with computing, um, and so you know making and building platforms that allow us to rapidly uh, develop and iterate um, you know different systems and make it accessible to a majority so that we can, you know, rapidly progress through, through these technologies and, and develop solutions that are going to really help people. Um, because of that ethos, you know, a DAO really makes sense because it's, it's pushing people for collaboration and, and coming together to, to achieving, uh, you know, global coordination towards a, a massive problem. And, um, yeah, in order to make the biology kind of programmable, we really, you know, for years we've been studying it you know, as an observer, and now we're really starting to to change our relationship with it and study it as um, a manipulator or as um, like a designer, an engineer of biology. And you know, the term engineering biology and, and bioengineering has been kind of thrown around quite a lot. And and synthetic biology is really like the the study of applying uh, biological systems to to solving world problems as as albert said it sounds like a very fascinating field in itself you know and by the looks of it it's still very nascent compared to any of the other trads uh, scientific research that's kind of happening uh, in the space uh, looking at the uh, could you talk about how uh, what's the state of uh, this particular field right now when it comes to general collaboration uh, across teams and uh, what's the funding route for startups who uh, want to kind of tackle these uh, these sort of key ideas and pain points uh, because what I see is uh, what exactly were those pain points that made you want to walk away from the status quo of joining uh, you know uh, these established uh, biotech uh, firms and you just wanted to start your own DAO what were the sort of the problems that you'd seen? Yeah. Um, so I'd say kind of first and foremost, uh, for me at least, is the the bias of where the research funding and energy is applied. Uh, so 
you know, you take the example of Symbio. Um, yes, it is relatively new and, and it's a rapidly emerging field, but actually the technologies and the principles have been around for a very long time. Um, they've just been mostly focused on healthcare and, and human biology, which is great. And of course, we want solutions and innovations that are going to help with human health. Um, but those are the opportunities for making money, not necessarily um, always the opportunities for, uh, you know, maximizing the impact of, of the technologies we have. And what we're seeing now is a shift in mentality of like, okay, we've got these bioreactors with massive capacity. Um, where we're producing millions of liters of, you know, uh, medicines, why couldn't we do the same for meat or why couldn't we do the same for milk and eliminate our, our greenhouse gas emissions from that as well? So that would be very nice. But as I say, there's a lot of bias, um, you know, because that's where the, a lot of the financial opportunity is and where the established giants in the space are is, you know, it's all in healthcare. So there's pretty high barriers to entry for people who want to come in and innovate in something slightly different. Um, but fortunately, we are we are seeing kind of a, a, um, a parallel relationship between the rise of Web3 and, and DAOs as a philosophy, but also, um, you know, using and applying biology to solve um, new problems, you know, such as climate, such as creating energy from, from carbon emissions um, and things like that. So, yeah, I see that the two are, are very much headed in the same direction, um, but we're definitely at the the beginning or the early stages of that progression. I mean, it's neat, you know. I mean, uh, what I sense is that uh, you want to be able to tackle more ideas than what's kind of existing in the status quo, and putting those ideas out there to a much more radical community is what's kind of motivating you. Uh, to kind of go out there. What uh, DSAC actually enables is that it's at uh, the frontier of uh, kind of facilitating and funding these sort of ideas and uh, the ability to kind of participate in this uh, global community and fund uh, climate opportunities within uh, synthetic biotech or uh, stuff like that. I mean, that's kind of fueled you that way. And But the thing is, uh, see, the community and the ideas uh, sound fantastic, you know, but uh, crypto in general had never really uh, kind of created that sort of structures where it was possible to uh, kind of collaborate at a smoother level uh, until the advent of the DAO uh, structure. Uh, what do you think is uh, the DAO structure fitting in the puzzle piece that can enable this sort of cross collaboration within this synthetic bio space? And uh, how has that progressed to your idea of Valley DAO? The main thing that, uh, and I think you also mentioned this, the main thing that, that DAOs uh, can provide to the synthetic biology ecosystem is a platform, uh, not only j just to collaborate and, and you know provide your expertise to, uh, to a community to achieve a certain goal, but also to create uh, some form of new incentives and rewards um, and usually in the case of, let's say, a, a governance token. So uh, the more you provide with your expertise and know-how and your network, you're actually being compensated by uh, for that through uh, governance token, which also you know, indirectly translate, translates into some form of ownership of the network, um, you know, some form of ownership and governance right to the value that the, the network uh, uh, creates. So the, the IP... The research data, um, you know, the you know, if, if the DAO spins out a company, you also have some some direct stake uh, and exposure to the success of uh, of this community and and you know what it can what it can create. Um, also, maybe going back, you know, a, a couple of you know maybe two decades back, really, when synthetic biology uh, started to get. Um, um, you know, created and, and, and you know, when, when people started using the term synthetic biology and, uh, you know, define the principles of synthetic biology, um, the original idea of synthetic biology was to create open source biotechnology. That was the original idea. The, the idea was that let's create uh, biological subsystems that are widely available in open source so that people can take them and just like Lego bricks put together their own systems to, to solve certain programs. Uh, uh, problems. Just like with programming, you have, you know, pre-built code that you can, uh, you know, take 
put together and then you know you you launch your your program uh, with synthetic biology, biology you're launching uh, your microorganism to to do a certain uh, feature um, and uh, that, that that was like the start of the synthetic biology movement but what I've discovered you know you know just leading reading literature looking at you know the the news that pops out and the how the you know sentiment and the philosophy has changed over the last two decades is that we've actually retracted back from this uh, from this idea uh, so to me the synthetic biology ecosystem has become actually much like gone from a decentralized structure to a more centralized structure and really what valida was trying to do is kind of you know not completely you know change that system you know that would be amazing if we could do that but just to provide an alternative uh, ecosystem for synthetic biologists biologists to opt into uh, to create innovation. So just like you know, many people say like Bitcoin is an alternative alternative monetary system that you can opt into. The same way, like I, I, I like to think about uh, uh, Valida when it comes to you know funding uh, academic research and then collectively as a community try to you know really bring that re research all the way from. The lowest technology readiness level, and just climbing up the technology readiness level, and ultimately become you know services and products that can help uh, uh, with var various planetary issues. Um, so yeah, I, ho I hope that uh, that answered uh, uh, your question. Um, I don't know if uh, Morgan, you want to add some some additional nuance here. Yeah, yeah, I just got uh, kind of two main things that I would say if I had to summarize. Uh, my personal vision for Valley Down and, and kind of what the goals are. Um, just to add on top of what Albert said is, you know, we're looking to to unite technology uh, and um, people. And that happens in two ways. That's connecting the technology and the researchers uh, to commercial opportunity um, by facilitating their commercialization and, and, and potentially funding the research. But it's also about bringing those technologies and those solutions to the community um, who who it's ultimately going to serve. And what I think, you know, I feel really strongly about in science as a whole is that it's, you know, it's there to serve the people. And yet I would say the vast majority of people have limited knowledge or understanding of what is even going on in the space. And I think that's something that, you know, it just doesn't foster a healthy uh, and sustainable ecosystem um, generally, uh, especially when we're starting to face pressures like a, a recession um, in, in Europe and, and I guess the rest of the world um, that, you know, people are starting to push back on, okay, why are we spending money here? Why are we doing things in, in this way? And, you know, if we can really demonstrate and connect the community uh, and, and the everyday person to science and make them understand that, you know, what we're doing is here to serve the people and, you know, we're not just throwing money down the drain, then, you know, it makes it, it makes science much more transparent uh, and accessible. And, you know, also Symbio is, is really, really cool. And I just think more people should appreciate that. And actually when you sit down and explain to, you know, if, for example, if I sit down and explain to my, my, my nan about how, um, you know, what the value is in synthetic, synthetic biology, you know, if she could throw money at it, she would. Um, and I think, you know, what Valley Dow is, is giving is people an opportunity to be, to be a part of that, even if they, you know, without spending four, four or five or more years of their life at, at university. I think uh, your yeah. nan is not the only person who would want to get involved <laughs> at this point. <laughs> the whole potential, that's the beauty of the DSI space, right? I mean, uh, in general, there's so much a uh, gatekeeping that prevents the general public who care about these sort of causes to participate or even facilitate the funding of these ideas. You just can't have that. And that's the beauty of DSI, you know, where the community can come in and participate or even facilitate the funding uh, across verticals that they care about. And in general, uh, I mean, one more thing that I find beautiful is that uh, synthetic, I mean, in general, w without DAOs and crypto, uh, we were all very restricted to our own jurisdictions, uh, except for probably a few MNCs or some way of freelancing or gaming in general. But here, uh, having a DAO allows uh, people from different verticals to come together. Uh, I mean, like, as you mentioned, synthetic bias, you know, it's pretty cool. You know, so why not have uh, people from across the globe come in to participate in this endeavor? 
and uh, pretty nice to see uh, valido really taking an effort for synbio that way you mentioned that teams can kind of um, uh, you kind of participate in the commercialization of these ideas and at the same time you want to like uh, have uh, that funding also kind of uh, ensured for these teams in short what exactly is the dao aspect that is being facilitated here i mean because as you mentioned before since this uh, sin bio it's not very well known generally and in the dsi and in the web3 space it's even less well known so how do you bridge that gap where where the general web3 community can participate in such a specialized field without losing the uh, goals of what valley3 is kind of uh, trying to achieve for those core sin bio teams you know how do you facilitate those uh, key ideas in a harmonious manner i mean these are questions that pop up in my head feel free to go ahead with it um yeah i just like to say kind of one thing and and you know as as the community and marketing lead um you know it's it's a lot of my job to to kind of make this um make this happen and i think the main uh the main way to do that is you tell a story and you know the story that people can understand and relate to whether they are familiar with dsi web3 um or or symbio um in general is the climate um everyone uh, or or the vast majority of people are motivated to do something uh, or they have anxiety about the future they have questions they are losing faith in in our governments in in how we're actually going to solve these problems and you know you you don't have to look very far on the internet to find the numbers uh, and, and the figures on how we're not you know meeting our targets in, in any way shape or form and so you know it's about telling that story uh, and making people see the value in what we're doing not necessarily for science and and research um but for the climate and society in general yeah i i just wanted to sort of uh, understand like uh, from all the points that you mentioned uh when you sort of started valley uh, what was the uh, response from uh, symbolic uh, community to valley dao and what was the uh, response when you kind of started the project yeah that's a, that's a very interesting um it's a very interesting question uh what i discovered immediately was that uh there were very few people in synthetic biology that knew, that knew you know what web3 was what blockchain is uh what dao's were you like all of that that we we've talked about today um so it was a lot of um you know had to do a lot of kind of like you know convincing educating um uh, you know understand okay what kind of language should we be using here to uh, uh and tailor it to 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 the synbio audience um eventually we decided to abstract away as much of this uh web3 lingo as possible um and just focus on okay what do synthetic biologists already know uh and just basically use those metaphors uh, and that, the you know those stories that are familiar to them to to explain what it was and you know eventually uh more and more people started you know showing up in the discords uh showed curiosity on you know what web3 is and kind of you know took went on on, on their own journey you know through dsi through through web3 uh, uh you know looking at okay what is an ip nft how can it be used um and uh i think that's uh, that's a really cool thing because it allows people to i think you know the use cases uh, for all of these things are haven't really been fleshed out completely so there's definitely some value in just letting people discovering them on their own and see like oh yeah this is how we can apply it uh and you know the idea of valida ori- originally was okay we're going to fund research we're going to do this uh and uh, eventually as more and more people came on we realized oh beyond just uh, funding research or oh, we can also help uh, academics in uh uh spinning out or translating you know technologies that they've already developed uh and then eventually you know another idea came in oh what if we can you know put together consortiums of researchers labs uh governmental you know organizations and uh you know apply for larger kinds of funding where you know valida was kind of like orchestrating uh, these these touch points uh and, and you know and having a kind of like a, a seat at the table and in, in these larger consortiums 
Um, and uh, uh, yeah, like it, it's a, uh, I've noticed like it's a, it's an ongoing process of, you know, what Validao is ultimately going to be. And I think that that's what I like about the flexibility of, of uh, you know, being in a DAO. You're always kind of like innovating and um, you're not limiting yourself to, uh, uh, you know, the proof of concept product uh, that you originally like envisioned. So uh, Morgan and Albert, so uh, the way I see it, uh, the general Synbio research community or any sort of uh, hardcore scientific community in general, see, there's a lot of buzz around the DSI space. And there's been a good response, especially for Vita DAO, for the longevity side of things. So you have a good amount of response coming in from the core team. But uh, when we when we talk to communities like LabDAO or other communities in general, the sort of response that we hear is that the core communities uh, that are working at the frontier of uh, cutting edge research in these uh, scientific fields find that the the on ramp to Web three it's hard. Uh, there's a money mindedness among these people that's very difficult to traverse. Discord is a big mess. And uh, all of these continue to be significant issues for uh, a solid collaboration and participation coming in from these uh, Synbio teams in general. How do you plan to bridge that gap and create that sort of community is a question I had in mind. Feel free to answer. Awesome. Yeah, it was a great question. Um, and so I'd probably start by saying... Um, it's a kind of core thesis, or at least my core thesis, is that we we need to give people their stage um, and their opportunity to shine in an area that they feel most comfortable in. And, you know, for the majority of what we do with Valley Dow, that's not going to be the Web3 side of things. We have obviously a platform and a space for those pe- people to, to communicate. But I think it's about creating you know, we have a, a global and a massive community, but it's also about creating these smaller satellite communities that are able to focus on the things that really matter most to them and bring the value that they most want to see in the world. Um, and I think with that, there's there's different ways in which we can facilitate that as, you know, as a as community leaders. Um, some of that is technology based, like you mentioned discord and, and there's a lot of debate, uh, whether discord is a, is a suitable tool or if it's, you know, doing the job it's supposed to, I mean, at least for us for now, um, it seems to work fairly well. Um, but we definitely do notice some pain points and, you know, we're actively looking for, for answers to solve some of those. Um, one, one of those problems is, okay. Uh, and we've spoken to some other DAOs and it seems to be the consensus that, you get um, like 90% of people that join uh, don't actively participate or engage. And, you know, there's a lot of questions around that. Is it because they're just there to watch and pay attention uh, and and be more like passive listeners? Um, But we kind of believe that um, there is at least a percentage of that 90 that are coming in and are experiencing overwhelm or they're perhaps not finding themselves comfortable enough to, to speak out in the community. And I think there's there's a number of ways we can address that. Um, as I said, creating those different spaces and, and satellite communities, I think, is, is first and foremost. Um, but then also connecting people uh, with people. And something, um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, Eden uh, Protocol, was something we've been testing out recently. Um, and what those guys are doing is super cool. Um, and, and just people innovating in this space in general is, you know, how do we connect people uh, to people, uh, connect people to projects, and then connect people to to the finances they need to execute a certain project. And I think those three things are, are really empowering. Um, and if we can find a way to, to, as you say, bridge that gap and make a community that, you know, is a large community become one that's more uh, focused around certain initiatives um, and is able to address certain things uh, as kind of a hive hive mind and as a collective, then you don't need one individual or several individuals that are constantly doing everything and understanding every part of the puzzle. Um, But, you know, you look at society as a whole and especially with social media, the internet and how connected we all are now, like we, we operate as, a single force of nature. And I think that's what's really powerful about DAOs is it's taking that natural um, equilibrium uh, of society, if you will, and 
putting it and using it in a more intentional way. Yeah, I uh, kind of agree with that, you know. Uh, I feel that at the heart of it, you know, it's that narrative that is able to, be, you know, bring together the entire community, you know. And at some point when the DSI movement itself is able to create that sort of cycle or that sort of flow where you are able to prove to the core team itself or the core community within these verticals that yes, you know, there, there is a lot of uh, talent over here that's being facilitated. There's a lot of funding towards these sort of ideas uh, that is kind of facilitating very solid teams. You know, it's kind of like the chicken egg problem, but if that, if you're able to prove that, you know, the right ideas are being facilitated through the DSI movement or through Validao in general, that kind of leads to an impetus from people who do care, you know. And that is the sort of idea that we see. Uh, so uh, even the sort of response that I have felt is uh, having that sort of strong narrative being sent across the core team, uh, core community of people uh, is also a good way to kind of uh, get together that community irrespective of the the sort of uh, issues that, you know, I mean, come on, DAOs in general, uh, even though you see like 4,000, 5,000 DAOs now, it's still a percentage of what could be facilitated and we are at the frontier of something very nascent and so if we are able to kind of uh, focus on the pain points of these uh, of funding and facilitating that collaboration i think with time uh, you know uh, with what you're doing by creating these sort of collaboration platforms and allowing for that sort of funding i i think we can kind of cross that bridge uh, in time but what I want to understand right now is uh, it's still work that has to be done now. So from the perspective of somebody who is in the uh, synthetic bio field, what do what can they expect when they enter into the Valida field right now? When they enter the, into the Discord, what is accessible to them? Uh, what has been the work and the uh, projects that has been empowered by the DAO so far? And how can uh, this uh, SynBio community con contribute? Right now, the you know if we just look, like look at the, the the global goal of of Valido, so pure you know simplifying it as as much as possible, uh, we want to find uh, academic research, but also independent research projects in synthetic, synthetic biology, um, where we can you know together with that researcher, you know usually the researcher they they have some form of idea of a project that they would like to uh, to realize, um, and together with them. Uh, together with the community kind of and people who are interested in the, that particular project we uh kind of like brainstorm okay what what is the project going to be about uh we kind of help them with for example literature studies uh we also help them in you know looking at the, the market opportunities uh for you know what kind of you know technology or ip this research can generate and what kind of value that, that it can you know provide to uh to the planet and humans People who who come into the to the community um, can join, you know, some of these you know initiatives and become part of the dialogue together with the researcher. Um, if you have a particular uh, research area that you would like to push forward in synthetic biology, or if you know a researcher that you know you, for example, would love to be working with, or you you consider them to uh, that their work should be more at the center stage and get more support. Uh, Valida was kind of like an ecosystem where you can make that, uh, where you can make that happen. Um, then, of course, you know, uh, um, there's also, you know, a, a place for the more entrepreneurially oriented individuals who are, you know, interested in the translational aspect of, uh, of synthetic biology. So how can we create startups, basically? Um, and that's something that we are also doing on the side of like trying to get projects funded is we also trying to get uh, projects uh, commercialized as well. Um, uh, so if you're interested in that, uh, you can join, you know, uh, certain groups uh, that where we're working actively with academics and, uh, you know, looking at the, you know, you know, what are the potential customers for, uh, for this solution? Like w which industries does it tailor to? Um, how can we, you know, create a business plan for this? Uh, how can we assemble kind of like a network of mentors that can help these uh, researchers? Or you can also become a mentor uh, yourself and, you know, eventually become an advisor for the creative startup. And 
uh, also get equity in that generated startup. If, if the you know if both the the research group and you have a, like a good dynamic and uh, you want to actually like continue and have a larger stake and a larger responsibility, um, you can uh, you can join that uh, that company. So that's uh, what we call like deal flow, basically. Um, the 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 longer term goal of the deal flow uh, is to to get uh, research projects funded, right, um, and to to generate you know that kind of treasury where we can fund projects of up to a hundred to two hundred thousand um, dollars. That's what we you know uh, uh, plan on having the uh, the token sale for, so the the community launch basically. Uh, to really build up a treasury that goes directly to funding these projects that we're currently um, kind of like incubating, preparing to to be funded, um, and the, the even longer term goal is okay. Once these projects generate IP, uh, is to find you know opportunities where this IP can be licensed, uh, sublicensed, or even you know you know to, to industry, but even to let's say. Uh, individual community members that would like to establish some form of like research project uh, uh, based on this and kind of like continuing the uh, the innovation process basically. Then of course there is also the the community and communications and uh, where people you know can can get involved. And I, I will let Morgan you know take it from there. Thanks, Albert. Um, yeah, just a quick uh, high level overview, I guess, of of what I see the the missing or, or Valley Dow is the missing puzzle piece in, in, in this whole ecosystem is that we are, you know, a lot of the problems in research and the translation of technology are not scientific. Um, so when we think about, you know, just on a ba- basic uh, uh, level, converting money into to impact, that's, you would think, uh, and a lot of people would believe that that's science. And, you know, for, for example, the climate, um, people would believe that oh, we're not there to cl- we're not um, on our way to climate solutions because the technology isn't there. Well, you know what we're finding in Synbio and and just the climate space in general is that the major inhibitors of this technology actually benefiting people is is not the science at all. And so, yes, there are all these existing communities in Synbio, and there's all these research groups around the world doing amazing work. But there's not enough support um, outside of the lab to help them realize what they're trying to to do inside of it. So, uh, comms is is a great uh, like group that we have um, because we're able to bring in people f- with a variety of different skill sets. And as a, as I mentioned before, like they're able to bring the value that they want to see and solve the problems and challenges that they uh, are most care about. And in turn, they're solving those problems for people uh, within the lab and helping to accelerate and translate that research. So, you know, it's a massive part of what we do. Um, and I think in a lot of DAOs and in a lot of, you know, traditional companies, it's a massively undervalued part of, of what they're building is uh, the ethos, the ideology, the community, and how do we do all of that stuff outside of the very hard and dry technical uh, journey that we're on to, to facilitate the, the end goal that we're trying to achieve. So like Valley Dow as a, as a whole is really empowering that and, and bringing something to Symbio that hasn't, hasn't been seen before, um, you know, popularizing it in a way that will allow it to become uh, supported through, through every step of its, of its progression. Is it just to, to add a little bit more there is like, Synthetic biology is extremely difficult to commercialize and actually create something like tangible that that people can use. It, it can take up to ten years of development, um, and you know, from the w- once the idea is like conceptualized, okay, this is what we this is the problem that we want to solve, and this is the technology that we're going to use. All up until you've actually solved that problem, there's a, there are a bunch of steps that you have to go through. There's a bunch of people involved, a bunch of stakeholders, a lot of funding, uh, but just a lot of expertise and know-how that is, you know, ultimately tied up to to humans, to 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 human knowledge. Um, and that's why I also see like DAOs and particularly Valley DAO can help in assembling 
basically. So, you know, assembling uh, a business developer, uh, assembling a person that has a, a large network that can help in, let's say, recruiting a, a CEO or a CSO for, for that spin out, or, you know, finding an expert in, let's say, enzyme engineering or whatever, right? Uh, to really, you know, accelerate uh, that whole process. And of course, you know, there's a lot of infrastructure that is needed. You need upscaling facilities. Uh, you need uh, downstream processing facilities. You need suppliers of all of the, you know, the the inputs uh, and the the tools that you need to to actually produce what you're trying to to produce. Um, and and you know, you today, you know, majority of this is sourced online, like through people use their LinkedIn networks, people use uh, email, people use uh, go to conferences, but what if there was a, like a one place where you can find all of those things? Uh, and, and, you know, that that to me is like, you know, one big gap that Validao can fill is getting access to uh, the human capital and, and the right network to, uh, you know, to, to make your dream a reality, basically. And, and you know, um, right now, you know, the majority of that know-how and that human capital that network is tied to the, you know, in, in San Francisco, in Boston, in in London. Uh, so in a way, you know, synthetic body, like access to that is not decentralized. It's quite centralized. Um, so, you know, with Valida, hopefully we can make that more widely available, more accessible to people. So like a meeting spot, a meeting hub where people can come together and collectively innovate in synthetic biology. Uh, what I find fascinating is that uh, uh, you mentioned that uh, in order to commercialize uh, an idea like this, it would take ten years, you know, uh, up to some uh, up to some cases and all of that. So, and uh, Synbio is also so specialized that you need the right right uh, know how, and you and there is a lack of business support beyond the research itself that you want to kind of enable. And you're doing this in a decentralized fashion also. But then it begs a question. Um, there is a lack of specialized talent in this field. And when you, and the problem, I mean, it just brings me to a question about, uh, I remember a tweet by David Phelps from Jokta a couple of days back. Uh, he was kind of ranting about the one token, one vote issue. And he was mentioning that a kind of a, a backstop to kind of preventing, you know, this sort of uh, lack of participation in governance and in the general ops of a DAO is that randos should not participate in general. And when you talk about something as specialized as Synbio, uh, the odds of having people who don't understand this space well enough to participate in these things, especially uh, you need a specialized talent and that sort of research to come in and understand uh, that idea and then also figure out if it makes business sense. That requires those people who are there in that field. It, it can't come from that general people itself. So how do you, on one hand, you have this sort of DAO structure that has a permissionless ability, but on the other hand, you have to kind of create some amount of uh, world aspect also where you have the general audience also come in but whoever is kind of capable can kind of benefit from the governance can also benefit from facilitating the funding of these things how do you plan to make that balance happen uh, especially with the advent of your token launch where it's kind of open to the general public what exactly does that entail uh, and how do you make that balance happen would love to kind of get an answer there yeah yeah it's a really interesting question and i think it's one that Nobody yet has the all of the answers to, um, but it's something we're being very intentional about, and you know was kind of why we were debating on on the community launch approach in general. Um, is that as you say, we don't want the network to be owned by randomers or people that might have uh, you know uh, negative interests, um, potentially harm uh, rather than help the ecosystem, and. I think it's something that, of course, we need to to be mindful of. Um, but I think, you know, we we also look at how we incentivize people, right? So if we are if we are incentivizing people to earn the grow token instead of just buying it, then 
contributors and people who are actually directly affecting and influencing the work are going to have a higher stake in the network. And so we see it kind of as perhaps uh, potentially a self-organizing system where you are essentially people are becoming leaders in their particular domain of expertise. And they're able to create these communities and bubbles surrounding them with people that are going to support them. Um, and, you know, their reputation is on the line at the end of the day. So if they bring in someone that's just going to, you know, treat it as a joke, then you know, that's going to affect them negatively. And the community is there to, to safeguard and, and police that as well. So if someone is, you know, not um, aligned with the interests of Validao, then it, it's really up to the community how we how we deal with that. I think... The real um, magic and, and why this is different from a, a centralized way of working is, okay, there is a little bit more risk perhaps in, in this permissionless system, um, but we have to, to some extent, trust in the nature of human beings um, and societies and communities in general. And I at least do have a lot of faith in that. Um, I think uniting people um, with this story, this common cause, uh, to do something uh, for the good of society means that, you know, it, as I said, it's going to police itself uh, to some extent. Um, and I'm keen to, to hear if Albert has any uh, additional thoughts on that. No, I, I totally agree with you is, you know, um, creating leaders, basically, uh, encouraging people to, uh, you know, be self-driven in their domain expertise and us more core contributors is, you know, allowing them and providing them the space to do what they want to do, basically giving them the resources, giving them the recognition, giving them, you know, access to, uh, you know, uh, certain Discord channels or the Google Drive or a certain documentation that can help them with that. Yeah, I mean, that I, I, I really believe like by the end of the day, like for a DAO to be successful, you need to encourage uh, self-leadership. It's impossible to to manage, you know, a group of 50 people uh, with a court like a sole team, uh, you need you need to create you know you need to create nodes and keep creating nodes all the time. Yeah, and uh, that's the beauty. You know, I mean, uh, for a lot of other DAOs that's come in the space, uh, it's just come in by a bunch of enthusiasts who probably are influenced, but they don't have that sort of background. But in this case, uh, you we have a solid team here in Valida with you people and the a broader core team that's kind of taking over this uh, very important vertical here. And uh, we, and I mean, me and the, the other Abhishek, we're kind of looking forward to seeing uh, what Wiley can come up with. It's kind of beautiful that way. And with that, we kind of uh, close the convo with, uh, why don't we tell the uh, community as a close off as what can we expect from Validao in the coming months in terms of alpha, in terms of what's coming out of the token, give us all those ju juicy alpha right there. <laughs> Any sort of key events that's happening, do let us know. Yeah, I was just going to say, so first and foremost, uh, coming up is DSI London. Um, so we're going to be attending that event and doing a talk on Symbio um, and, and why it's relevant for the climate and why it's relevant to DSI. So similar to the conversation we've had with you guys, but we'll be diving uh, a little bit more into depth on how uh, logistically Validao is planning to solve some of these problems. Um, so that's a really exciting one. Um, the event is in person, but it will also be live streamed, I believe, and recorded and uploaded uh, post post the event. So if you're new to the DSI space or you know you want a, a concentrated environment of some really talented and awesome projects, then that's that's definitely an event to be aware of. Um, and then as for for Valley Dow in particular, obviously we mentioned that we're we're planning to launch our token this year. Um, so with that, we're planning obviously to to fund our first research projects. Um, and you know, the one that's most progressed is, is going to be really exciting. Uh, we already have some info about that one on our website that you can check out. Um, but yeah, there'll be, there'll be more updates on that one coming soon. Definitely. Yeah. And, uh, also be on the lookout for, we, we have a bunch of, you know, Twitter space, uh, guests that we are lining up as well as, a, a journal club to, to interview various researchers in the field. And of course, uh, and you can mark it in your calendar already today is early early april uh, that's when we plan to actually launch uh the token so we will be a completely fair community launch so not even 
us founders will have uh, an allocation. You know, that will all be voted in through a governance proposals um, to to make this as you know fair and democratic as possible. So sadly, an airdrop to Click Podcast listeners is not going to happen anytime soon. Huh? <laughs> uh, but looking forward to the launch, I think people who are kind of uh, listening in would be kind of stoked to see how it all kind of progresses at this point. Uh, and with that, we kind of close the convo. How can people find uh, the Valida project and you guys personally? And uh, what can how can we contribute to this wonderful project? Twitter, Valida. Uh, valley underscore dow linkedin just search valley dow you'll find us there and of course the uh the amazing almighty discord you can find <laughs> us there as well that's the the best place to get in touch with us and then meet the rest of the community um you can also like on the on the valley dow page you can apply to become a contributor and we'll help you with the with the onboarding and, and help you find a, a project that you would like to to get involved in so if you want to learn more about synthetic biology if you're you know, from the Web3 space, uh, you don't know what synthetic biology is. Uh, don't be afraid. We'll help you through that process. Uh, and I can definitely guarantee you that you will find it very fascinating uh, to, to learn more about this and getting involved. All right. Thank you, guys. This was, uh, this was a lot of fun. Really appreciate the time. Absolutely. We really appreciated it. Thank you so much, guys, for coming in. And we really enjoyed the show. Thank you.